Hello everybody, Luna here, and yeah, it has been a while since I've actually done a review. I've been lazy. And working, just busy in general, really, so it happens. Today we're going to talk about a book by a writer who... Is it the first time I've ever read anything of his? Initially I was actually reading this with my ex over like Skype calls, but well, he's my ex now, so as you can guess, I'm not really doing that now, so I had to finish reading it at work. But, they were going to talk about Clive Barker's Cabal. I have a very nice looking copy of this book for some reason. I mean, I just found this out here. The book is actually set in Alberta, which is kind of weird. As in, really weird. Because it's set in Alberta, but well, as I'll explain, this book could literally be set anywhere. The setting doesn't make a difference because of the way it's written. But let's talk story. Cabal is about a man named Boone who... He has issues. His relationship with his girlfriend is pretty much disintegrated. He's... We don't really know a ton about what he was like, like before the narrative starts. But he's been seeing a therapist and his therapist has decided that, oh no, I failed with you. Here's a bunch of pictures of people I believe that you murdered because you talk about it in your trances. And Boone immediately agrees with him. I wish I was joking on that, that Boone just, I mean, he's like, oh yes, you're right. But since he's used to tr trusting his doctor, whatever, I get it. Anyways, it's pretty damn obvious right from the get-go that something's fishy here. And considering that this doctor makes him retell stories of, like, the murders and all of this after forcing him to look at the pictures. It doesn't take a scientist to figure out that the therapist is the murderer. That would of course be Dr. Decker, who is probably the most interesting part of the story, because his character actually has some intrigue. That Decker himself, he just, this is just what he does. He goes around like butchering people. He's very violent. And the fact he's not been caught in the 80s is very insulting to the Canadian crime system. I'm gonna say the RCMP probably would have caught this creep. I mean, just because he doesn't leave fingerprints doesn't mean he's leaving any, he's probably leaving some evidence behind that they could find him with, but whatever. Anyways, Decker just kinda blames Boone for it. Boone attempts to commit suicide, gets put in a hospital where he meets Narciss, who talks about Midian. Midian is a place where monsters go. It's mentioned in the sense that he's heard of it before, and Boone decides to go there, and it's north of As Athabasca, I think it's just east of Dwyer, if you remember right? These are all like real places. Midian itself is not, I hope. I think we actually looked on a map and there are no towns with that name. But it's right near Sheerneck, which I'm also not 100% certain if that one's real, I don't remember. It's part of Alberta I'm not familiar with, I'm used to the other side of the north end of the country. Because I've just got family up there, so. Anyways. When they start talking about town of... When Boone decides to go to Median, which happens pretty quickly. Considering he just got hit by a car, you think he'd be in worse shape, but whatever. He gets up there, and he actually does find Midian, which is his ghost town. He's got this big, fancy cemetery that's full of the living dead, pretty much. Shave shifters, people who can fly, freaks, I guess there's no other way to describe it. They're there. He gets bitten by one of them and then is promptly shot dead by the cops. And then we switch to the, the narrative of Lori, his girlfriend, who is so damn boring. <sighs> Lori just kind of exists. Like, that's all there is to it. I wish I was joking, but there's just nothing to her. Lori just furthers the plot along by following Boone's trail, finds where he was killed, ends up going back to Midian. He, she meets up with a lady named Cheryl on the way, who just kind of... Cheryl exists to get killed. <laughs> like, this story, as you can tell by the way I'm describing it, I, it doesn't really do much with itself. Anyways, though, I'll get to that when I'm done the plot synopsis here. 
When Lori goes back to Madian, she ends up saving a child named Lubette, which, no, we did not name her cat after the character, it just kind of happened. Eh. And by saving the child, she discovers, she learns of the Nightbreed, which she probably shouldn't know, but whatever. And she ends up, she, she has a feeling that Boone has something to do with that, that maybe they took him or something, because I know his body disappeared. But that's all that she knows. Anyway, Cheryl meets this perfect man, apparently, at the hotel they're staying at, who, guess what, it's Decker. Decker kills her, attempts to kill Lori. Lori flees back to Midian. Boone learns about the Nightbreed, because he encounters Boone. Decker learns about the Nightbreed. Boone actually is there, surprise, surprise. Gets his ass kicked out for revealing their presence to the cops. And, yeah, from there it just gets worse. It turns out Decker manages to slaughter the entire populace of a hotel without anyone noticing this is happening. Like, I get it, it's a small town, but still, it's ridiculous. And the fact they have a fully fledged police station, they should have at least somebody would, would have heard something if bigger. But eh, whatever. So everyone dies. Boone shapeshifts, because he's part shadow warrior, part shapeshifter. He's like, he's such a Mary Sue character, I swear. He has the best of both worlds. Anyways, he ends up cannibalizing on one of the corpses, and the cops arrest him. Lori manages to sneak out without being seen. And she realizes she has to do something. She goes back to where she actually encountered, like, where she bumped into Decker after he killed Cheryl, which is like this burnt out building, and ends up Having a vision, because she's now mentally connected with Babette, that Decker has brought a whole bunch of cops there, and they're just tearing the place apart trying to kill the Nightbreed. So she realizes she has to do something. Narcissus shows up again, as he did make his way to Midian eventually. He helps Lori get Boone out of jail. The two of them have a chapter-long sex scene, which is probably the most detailed part of the book. It's very annoying, trust me. They go back to Midian. They are unable to save it. I will give the book credit for that. It's not a happy ending. There's nothing they can do to save it, but they do manage to kill Decker. We find out Boone's destiny, that he's the chosen one who will lead the Nightbreed. He, will, he, he was destined to destroy Midian and lead the Nightbreed and becomes their next ruler where he has the abilities of a live human but with his Nightbreed powers. Lori tries to kill herself, and he has to infect her and turn her into a nightbreed, because she's a drama queen. And they set up a sequel that never happened, that I'm aware of. The plot just kind of does its own thing. And look how thin this book is. I just described a lot of stuff, and yet... Well, it's like maybe over two... Uh, what is it, like, under 300 pages? There's a demo for another book at the end there. Yeah, it's like 250 pages. All of this is just crammed in there. There is nothing to make sense of, like, you know, it's set in Alberta, so you think they would talk about, like, you know, like, the landscape up there is quite hilly, if it's anything like the part of Alberta I'm used to up north. You know, you have these, like, ghost towns. You have all this, like, really interesting stuff you can work with. It does nothing with it. It feels like it's set in the States. This could be set in Maine, and it would have the same bloody effect. Because Boone manages to travel from Calgary to Athabasca, like, stupid fast. It's ridiculous. Like, like for example, I live kind of like in the middle of these places. It's about a two and a half hour drive. And that's taking, like, the fast highway and do like speeding the whole time because I always do because everybody speeds on that highway and it's still like a good two hours possibly longer if there's traffic so the fact you have to hitchhike there that quickly is a little weird the story never builds on anything we never really understand Boone and Lori's relationship outside of the fact that their sex life kind of sucked early on but she was apparently in love with him Mainly because his like mental issues apparently, so I'm guessing he was more pity than love, and that he's attractive. 
and then he dies, and then he, she she wants to have sex with him when he's dead, and they keep talking about the fact he's cold, and it's just gross. Yeah, I don't like it. I wanted to like this book. I remember actually watching the movie Nightbreed, and for what it's worth, Nightbreed isn't like the director's cut at least, is not a bad adaptation of this. The only thing it's really missing is some of the character depth with Decker. It's the whole thing with him and the mask he wears. It's kind of an interesting interplay, which I think would have been better suited in another story. It doesn't work here. The focus should have been Midian and the Nightbreed, and Boone's relationship with Laurie and working and building on that. Not just being like, oh, we're going to jump all over the place. We have this, like, serial killer who's teaming up with the cops to kill all the Nightbreed. That's dumb. It doesn't need to be in the story. I just would have been interested more to see this as more of a character study for Boone. Like, learn about what he's like prior. You know, have him find out about Midian some other way instead of, you know, the whole murder thing going on there. Or have that tie into it, but have it be more of a background element. Like, this is a thing that happens, but we're not focusing on it, because once he's out of Calgary, he's not affected anymore. Like, maybe he plans on coming back to set things right. Maybe he doesn't. Maybe he just doesn't care. Maybe he genuinely thinks he is the serial killer, and never gets over that. But instead, no, he's like, perfect, he manages to kill Decker dramatically. Narcissus has a heroic sacrifice to save Lori's life. Boon is just like the perfect little Mary Sue type character who's got a destiny and all this. And it's just dumb. I want this book to be good. I really do. It's set in Alberta. That's such a rare occurrence to find a story set where I live. And it does nothing with the setting. I mean, to be fair, we're kind of the Texas of Canada. I get it. Write it in Texas, then, though, if you're not going to do anything to make your story unique. The only thing it really mentions is canola fields, which... Eh? They grow canola everywhere. That's not a big deal. I mean, in the 80s, yeah, totally. Like, that was, like, the main thing out here, I guess. But do something with that, maybe. There's a... T like, they're talking about an abandoned town. There's tons of abandoned towns and, like, burnt-down remnants of towns out here. So do something special with it than having a big cemetery. That's not that weird. I've seen a lot of just random cemeteries in the middle of nowhere out here. Trust me. It's a thing. Normally there was a town there in the past. Like we got hit pretty hard during the Great Depression. Just saying. I don't know. It feels like he just wanted to pick somewhere that a story hadn't been set in. And it's like, oh, Alberta. Let's do that. Why well, Saskatchewan? This Saskatchewan's a weird rectangle. It's kind of fun, right? For what it's worth, you're, you could just watch the movie. The movie actually adds more to the characters and gives it a little bit more development. The book, the writing is just kind of meh. It never develops anything, and yet, for all it rushes past in the story, it still had time for a chapter-long sex scene, plus a long masturbation scene. This is just a pulp novel. This is all it is. There's nothing special here. There's nothing of real significance. And even the concept of the Nightbreed is just in their, like, their whole culture and the great creator of uh, Midian. It falls flat because they don't do anything with it. You never really learn anything about them because it's just skip past. Because I get it, Boone doesn't have time to learn it either. She screws everything up. But do more with it. Like, you can give us some exposition on this stuff. I don't care that Laurie and Boone have a bad sex life. Don't do tell that through exposition. Have that be a character dialogue thing. Give them something early on, other than, the, like, the meeting after he dies. Just, it's not amazing. The fact this was adapted into a movie is weird. And for what it's worth, I don't really recommend it. Just watch the movie, watch the director's cut, or even better yet, the cabal cut. That's a thing. The theatrical print ain't great from what I've heard. I haven't watched it yet. But, yeah... Maybe the next Clive Barker book I'll read will be better. We'll see. Anyways, I'll see you guys for the next review, and thanks for watching, and I appreciate your patience.